This Faith Thing, episode 59. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode. Many Christians, believers, struggle with giving to God. And the reason why they struggle is because of lack of faith. When you have faith in God, you are able to put all of your trust in him, knowing that your tomorrow will be all right. But what people do is that they think and overthink about how their bills will be paid, how everything in their life will be settled. And because of that, they pay their bills without giving to God. My friends, this is one of the worst things that you can do for your life because not only are you showing and telling God that you don't trust him, that you don't trust that he will take care of you, you will never be able to grow your life, your walk, your faith, your journey with God. You will never be able to grow spiritually and your faith will consistently be low. And then that's exactly how God is going to deal with you because our Bible tells us that God deals with us according to our faith. The day you understand the concept of giving, giving to God is the day that your walk with God will increase, is the day that your walk with God will grow and you will grow spiritually because your faith must be big at that point. God wants you to be able to give him your all. God wants to know that you trust him, trust him with everything that you own. Just as Abraham was ready to give and to sacrifice his son to God, Isaac, God wants to see the same faith with you. He wants to see the same faith in you. God told Abraham to go to the mountain to kill his son, to sacrifice his son, the one he waited for forever, friends. He waited for this son forever, the promised child forever. Now God was asking him to go and sacrifice this boy. And Abraham took the boy, he took the wood, he took the fire. And as they were approaching, the young boy looked at his father and said, Dad, where is the sacrifice? And his father told him that God would provide. That takes faith, friends. That takes absolute faith. And God has to see your heart that you really have faith in him. There's no father that will wait and wait and wait for his promised child and then wants to sacrifice the boy right after the boy is born. God had to have been testing him. And God really did test him and he tested him to see his faith. And as they were approaching and he has already gone to the mountain and he bound the boy up. And as he was about to slaughter this boy, sacrifice his son, he heard a voice crying out to him, Abraham, don't touch him. It was at that very moment that God knew how much faith Abraham had in him. It was at that moment that God was able to deal with Abraham the way he has dealt with Abraham. And we all know the story of Abraham. We sing and we talk about Abraham all the time. We sing songs about Father Abraham. We say that his blessings are ours. But are we doing exactly what Abraham did? Are we giving all to God? Are we giving our faith to God? There is absolutely nothing that Abraham was not ready to give God. Abraham was a faithful tither, just as we learned yesterday. He was a faithful tither, even before the law came down. And we can see here in this story, just this one story that I've narrated, that Abraham was also a faithful giver to God. He wanted to give God his all, his very best. And that is all what God wants from us. When you study the Bible, you find in so many areas, so many instances of God speaking about offering to him. In Exodus 35, verses 4 through 10, Moses spake unto the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering unto the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red, a badger's skin, a shittim wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and onyx stones and stones to be set up for the ephod and the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord had commanded. God is asking us to give him an offering. You can see here that God listed out what he wanted. He had already told Moses on the mount what he wants, what he expects, what he desires from the children of Israel. And now Moses was now given that instruction to the children of Israel. You can see here in this passage that we've just read that Moses even says it here that those that are willing 
those that have a willing heart. You have to be willing to give to God. You cannot go to God grudgingly. You cannot give to God grudgingly. You have to have a willing heart. You have to have joy and desire. It should make you happy to give to God because God is the one that has given it to you in the first place. Your offering is what you give to God for the progress of his kingdom, for the progress of his church. Your offering is not to be confused with your tithes and it's not to take the place of your tithes. When you go to church, you should not be deciding whether you should pay tithes or if you should give an offering. That's why the time that you give money is called tithes and offering. Your offering is a gift to God. It's your gift to God. Telling the Father God that this is what I present to you. This is what I can give you. This is what I have. I have always been raised in church to give to God, not only my tithes, but my offering. And that I should never enter the house of the Lord with an empty hand. I have said in the past days that God uses our monetary blessings, what we give to him to bless us in return. Giving offering to God is nothing new, friends. It's absolutely nothing new. It has been practiced Since the Old Testament. In fact, when you read the Old Testament, you will see that the children of the Old Testament offered all sorts. They gave God all sorts of offerings, burnt offerings, meal offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, thanksgiving offerings, and so much more. There were so many different types of offerings that they were giving to God. I wish I can go into all these types of offerings and tell you because they all have different meanings. And they're all given at different times. And by God's grace, he will give me the time to explain them to you at some other point. But the point of the matter is that offering has always been done. They have always been giving God something. God wants you to give to him freely. He wants you to show him that you can give to him, that you can give him your all. In the book of Exodus 25 verses 1 through 9, the Lord spoke to Moses, giving him the instructions to Moses of building his tabernacle. He told him specifically to tell the children of Israel to bring an offering unto him. God told Moses what to bring. He instructed them of what he wanted. When you give God an offering, you are to make sure that you give God an offering that is acceptable, not an offering that will be turned to the side or pushed to the side or kicked to the side. There are some people who give God an offering that will move mountains on their behalf because they give God acceptable offering. God wants you to do what he wants you to do for him. Otherwise, your offering will not be accepted. In the book of Genesis 4, 1 through 5, we have the story of Cain and Abel sacrificing, giving offering unto God. These are two brothers who both brought an offering to God. One was accepted, but the other one wasn't. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, the Bible says, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. When you read this passage very well, this story very well of these two brothers and what they did exactly for God, you see that Cain brought an offering. Indeed, he did bring an offering. He gave an offering to God. He brought the offering of the fruit of the ground. But Abel brought flocks, the firstlings, firstlings meaning the firstborn of his flock. And he not only brought that flock, friends, he brought the best of the flock. He brought them with their fat portions. And he gave it to God. He offered it to God the best. Even before he was assured of what he will receive tomorrow, he was able to give God his best. He didn't say, oh, because I don't know I'm going to get the best tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to recover this tomorrow. I don't know if my business is going to survive. I don't know if I'm going to survive. I don't know how my bills are going to get paid. I don't know if they're going to turn off my lights. Friends, if you have faith in God, your job is to give God the best. Your job is not to sit there and analyze. I've said it before. You cannot use your minuscule mind 
to work with God. You cannot. You have to have a faith that is bigger than you. That is bigger than the building in which you are standing in. You have to have a faith that is so big that people will look at you that something is wrong with this person. Yes, because you are so high on the Lord because you trust him with your heart. You cannot begin to rationalize what God has already given you before you give it back to God. You have to do it with a willing heart. Abel was able to look at what he had and he said it in his heart that I'm going to give God the best. I'm going to give God the firstborn of my flocks. Not only am I going to give the firstborns, I'm going to give God the firstborns with their fat portions and sacrifice it to God. He gave him his best and the offering was acceptable unto God. Hebrews 11.4 says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift. God testifying. Friends, that should just make you move. That should just give you shivers like it just did me. God testifying that this gift that he has just given me was awesome. It says God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. And though he is dead, that's what the Bible is saying. Though Abel is dead, his offering still speaks. His sacrifice still speaks. His offering to God still speaks because of his faith, because he lived by faith. His offering, his sacrifice, it still speaks. Just listen, God testified. God was a witness to his sacrifice. God knew that this young boy did something that moved me, that touched me have to live by faith, friends. When you are working with God, you have to live by faith in every aspect of this journey of your life. Every single thing, you must live by faith. You have to know it in your mind that God is going to take care of you. Faith is the prerequisite for all of us when we want to deal with God. God wants you to have faith in him. If you desire to please God, you must trust him. Abel was able to demonstrate a quality offering to God. When you give to God, you must give unto him, not the remnants that's in your wallet, friends. God knows your pocket. He knows how much you have. He knows how much you can do. He knows what you can afford. God will accept one dollar from someone who has only two dollars. Because he knows out of the little that the person has, they have given me their best. He will accept it more than he will accept $100 from someone who has $1 million. Think about it. It doesn't even make sense. For you to have such money, $1 million, and you think that you can give God a measly $100, God deserves more than that, friends. He deserves your best. He deserves everything that you have. The money that you have is because of God after all anyway. You cannot produce the money anyhow. There's no way that you can produce the money. And never should you think that because you're earning millions upon billions that you have the ability to do it. Because if God wanted to sit on wherever that source is coming from, if God wanted to pluck you out of that job, if God wanted to pluck your resources out of your hand, trust me, it doesn't even take God a whole second to do it. It would happen. God is the one that's giving you the money in the first place. So why? Why are you being stingy? Why is it that you're having problems with giving offering in the church? During offering time, you are to take your offering unto God with joy, with happiness, with gladness in your heart. You should dance before him and give it to him because he's the one that has given it to you. If God wanted you to be poor, if God wanted you to live in poverty, he would have told you that. He would have said that in his word. But he's telling you in the book of Malachi 3 that he wants to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. I want to give you the best that I have to give you. I want the earth to yield its increase to you. But you have to also give to me. You have to give me something too. Deuteronomy 8.18 tells you that for it's God that gives you the power to get wealth, friends. If not for God. If not for God. If not for God, friends, and everything. If not for God, if the world had the ability to swallow you up, you think you'll be here? You think you'll be able to even earn that money? If not for God, we would not have anything. The book of Proverbs 18, it tells us exactly what an unacceptable offering to God is. It says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Cain did not serve God like his brother did. 
He didn't have faith like his brother did. He did not give God his best like his brother did. His heart was wicked. And therefore God did not accept his sacrifice, his offering. It was absolutely unworthy, worthless before God. Cain did not want to give God anything anyway. He gave it to him grudgingly. And therefore the offering was useless. It was very useless before God. When God increases you financially, friends, your job is to give back to God. You are supposed to give God your best. Think about it this way. God blesses you. He fills you up. Then you give back to God. What have you just done? What you did was that you created space, space to receive more from God. And he continues to pour into you, pour into you, pour into you until you overflow. But if you're greedy and stingy and you refuse to give God anything or you're just giving God a dollar here, two dollars here, five dollars here, then you think God is going to be blessing you that he's going to be pouring back into you? No, because number one, there's no even space. There's no space for you to receive it anyway. And you're just not following spiritual principles. So there's no way that you're going to get anything from God. God wants to bless you, friends. He wants to give you his best. But you also have to give him your best. When you give God your best, it will pain you. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. When you take from what you don't have, but you're giving God willingly. When you don't know how your bills will be paid, you give God willingly. You have to do that with God, friends. You have to do that with man, with your fellow family members, with your brethren. God always has a way to bless you. God always has a way to bless you, friends. There's a short story that I want to share with you, something that happened to me probably about a year ago. On a Sunday morning like this, my youngest sister called me and she asked me to stop at a store to pick something up for her. And the reason why she called me to do it was because this particular store was close or is close to my house. And everybody knows me. When it's time to go anywhere, I don't like to be uh, caught off guard. I don't like to do anything that's going to take me off the course. However, I reluctantly initially did it. But then as I was driving to that particular place, I said, well, what's my problem? Why is it that I cannot do it anyway? Because this store, I'm really going to pass the store before I get to church. And at the same time, I was also praying to God for a specific thing financially, for a specific thing, a specific amount financially. I didn't know where it was going to come from and I needed it quickly. So as I bought her this particular thing and I got to church and as I was pulling into the church, I was actually walking into the church. She was pulling into the parking lot. She tapped her horn and I looked back and I actually went back to her to give her what she asked me for. So as I now got into her car and I gave it to her, she was very grateful. She was very thankful and it made me happy that I was able to do it for her. She just kept thanking me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I was very shocked as to, I mean, what's the big deal? And friends, as I gave this particular item to my sister, she now in turn gave me an envelope and I was shocked because I wasn't expecting it. I had never discussed with my sister what it was that I was discussing with God. And so as she gave me the envelope and I opened it, I looked and I saw that exactly what I was asking God for, in fact, more of what I wanted God to do for me is what my sister had just given me. And I asked her, what was the purpose of it? Why are you giving this to me? And she said she was led to give it to me. Friends, when you do for God, trust me, your tomorrow will be okay. I never once discussed with my sister what it was that I needed. I just had the belief that God will take care of it some way, somehow. I never thought that he would use my sister. I was very overwhelmed. I was very grateful, but I was thankful above all because I knew that God actually heard what I was telling him. He listened on his throne and he was saying that no problems are there. I will take care of it. It's very easy. It's very simple for me to do it. When God wants to use somebody to bless you because you have been giving to God, you don't have to discuss it with that person. That person, you sometimes may not even know that person. And that person will find you, fish you out because they have been led from the heavenly father to do and give whatever it is that you desire from God. Friends, God uses people. God can use anything to accomplish his work here on earth. You have to give to God and you must do it in faith. You must do it in faith. You must know that God will take care of you. God will do what he says he will do in your life. But before that happens, you must give to God first. I'm trying to pound it in. You must give your best to God. 
When you give to God, of course, there will be blessings, rewards that will come with it. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it will be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. For with the measure that you use, friends, that you individually, whatever you use, it will be measured back unto you. God desires to give us our very best. This verse, Luke 6.38, we'll take a deeper look into it tomorrow in the term of seed giving, seed sowing unto God. The measure that you use, what you do for God, is how God will measure it back unto you. He wants to do his very best for you, friends. But it says it here with the one that you use, the measure that you use first. Then it will be measured back unto you. Let's put it into practice of giving cheerfully, giving happily, gladly unto the Lord so that we can all receive his overflow. I pray that this message has blessed you. Go in peace and I'll speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adil Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.